Rabindranath's role in the liber liberation of Bengali women was a seminal one. Initially, he exposed the plight of women and argued for their autonomy through his letters, short stories, and essays. Through his novels, he was able to construct new and vital female roles to inspire a new generation of Bengali women. Later, by this act of admitting females into his Shantiniketan school, he became an innovative pioneer in co-education, writes Kathleen O'Connell, our next speaker. Kathleen has done extensive research, especially on female characters in Tagore's work. Dr. O'Connell teaches courses on South Asia at the University of Toronto. Her research interests include Rabindranath Tagore, Shatajit Rai, and Bengali culture and literary history in general. Please welcome Kathleen O'Connell. Well, good afternoon. Uh, I would like to thank Manjula Kumar and the Smithsonian for organizing this very wonderful event, as well as my host, uh, Ananda Roop Roy and Asia. My paper today will focus on Tagore as a champion of women's uh, rights and liberation. When it comes to the figure of Rabindranath Tagore, one need not look a great distance to discover avenues of contemporary global relevance. As Shotojit Ray so aptly comments at the beginning of his magnif magnificent document on the poet, which we will see following this presentation, Tagore left behind a heritage which no fire could consume. It was a heritage of words, and music and poetry, of ideas and ideals that have the power to move and inspire us. Among such far-reaching ideas and ideals was Tagore's vision for a transformed role for Bengali women, which he put forth in his writings and educational experiment at Shantaniketan. To understand Tagore's many involvements and and his interest in the rapidly changing role of females, it is useful to refer back to the seminal role of the Tagore family in the socio-cultural transformation of 19th century Bengal. In, in describing the unique qualities of his home, Robindranath noted the special openness to the range of human potential and emphasis upon various freedoms that were to be found within his family qualities that he would assimilate and foster in his later works. Such qualities developed early in the family's history and were evident in the pre-colonial period. The members of the Jorashanko Takorbari, and we saw a picture in uh, Umadi's presentation, both male and female, played an integral part in the socio-religious, literary, educational, and nationalist currents that were taking place in their time. Their role in helping transform the lives of Bengali women was no exception. One can argue that the women's movement within India had its beginnings right within the Jorashanko joint family. Dorkanath Tagore, the grandfather of Rabindranath, along with Ramon Roy, had advocated women's education and social reform regarding women as early as 1842. Both Ramon and Dorkanath argued that a nation could be only as elevated as the level of its female population. Rabindranath's father, Dabendranath, though more cautious regarding social change, supported the Bethune School for Women's Education and did not prohibit the participation of his daughters and other female members of the family in various forms of education and social work. He even sanctioned theatrical performances by the win women within the confines of Jorashanko. We can also gather from anecdotal accounts and Dabendranath's own autobiography that Robindranath's mother, Sharada Devi, played a strong role. 
Since Debendranath was frequently away from home, she also handled the accounts of her daughters and their husbands, who lived in Joroshenko, thus giving her a good deal of control over the family. Robindranath's older sister, Shorna Kumari, who was one of the most distinguished literary figures of her time, provided a role model for other women. Shorna Kumari wrote many books. She was a novelist, poet, playwright, songwriter, journalist, and social worker. She's considered a pioneer of the Bengali historical and romantic novel. In her role as editor of the family journal Bharati, articles on and by women were encouraged, as well as popular articles on science, which would have given the non-speaking, non-English speaking Bengali women access to scientific ideas. Moreover, her vision was a broad and egalitarian one. She founded a ladies' theosophical society and helped the Shaki Shamidi, an educational organization that brought together women of different social and religious groups, Hindu, Muslim, Christian, with the goal of educating widows and destitute women and making them self-supporting. She was also among the first group of women who attended the annual session of the Indian National Congress in 1890. Shorna Kumari's daughter, Sharla Devi, who did not marry until the age of 33, provided another role model with her active political participation during Gandhi's non-cooperation movement. Sharla was the first in the family to have an occupation and a salary after she accepted a highly paid appointment at Hyderabad Girls' School in 1895. Although she did not choose to keep the position long, Taking the position at all went against the general model for female uplift that was embedded in the ideals of the Bengal Renaissance. Such a paradigm sanctioned female education insofar as it helped to nurture a woman in matters of the home and the world so that she could become a more congenial companion for her husband and better guide for her children in nation building. The woman's issue was a much debated topic during the Renaissance period. Novelist Vankim Chandra Chatterjee, whose female characters provided an earlier prototype um, for the new or no being woman, had close links with the Tagores. His much discussed essay, Prachin or No Bean, considered the merits of the traditional versus modern woman. And it is noteworthy that Chotojit Ray has acknowledged this essay in his film, Charlotta, based on Tagore's Nushtinir, The Broken Nest. Accepted activities for the Nobin or new woman as opposed to the Prachin or traditional woman included writing, social uplift, developing women's organizations, and the arts. However, work outside the home for wages was a controversial area and the medical profession and teaching were two of the few areas where women were able to receive economic recompense. Among the male members of the Tagore family, Rabindranath's brother, Satyendranath, stands out as one of the most progressive members of the family. And his wife, Ganad Anandani, became a role model for modern female behavior. She broke many taboos, leaving the Antipur, appearing in mixed company that included foreigners, crossing the prohibited black waters, and traveling on her own. Not only did she redesign Bengali female dress to make it more appropriate for traveling beyond the Antipur, she contributed articles on female education and social reform to various journals. In an 1864 letter to his young wife, Satyendranath was one of the first to use the image of the caged bird, which would become the iconic image of women in Purda. I asked father to send you to England, he writes, but all my efforts have failed. Father wants me to abide by the conventions and customs of the Zanana. I shall never be happy if I can keep you, if I keep you caged nor will your body and mind develop properly. 
I wonder why men consider giving education and freedom to women to be the root of all evil. Rashundari Devi, one of the earliest Bengali female writers, was to use the same imagery a few years later. Having taught herself how to read and write, she proclaimed, people put birds in cages for their amusement. Well, I was like a caged bird, and I would have to remain in this cage for life. I would never be free. Rabindranath made his first trip to England in 1878 at the age of 17. And some of his earliest statements regarding the need uh, for more social freedom and independence for Bengali women come in a series of letters back home. After attending a party where British men and women mixed freely, Tagore wrote a letter contrasting the free mixing that occurred between men and women in England and the isolation of Bengali women who were confined and separated from the world. Wrote Tagore, to consider the enjoyment of free mixing between people to be a cardinal sin, to be unsociable, and to turn it into a sensational matter is not only abnormal, it is unsociable and therefore, in a sense, uncivilized. Men are engrossed in all manner of amusement in the outside world, while women are like privately owned tamed animals, chained docilely to the walls of the chambers. In response to criticism of this letter, which had been published in Bharati, then edit, edited by his older brother, Dijendranath, Tagore wrote, the editor has said that keeping women in Purda is not an outcome of the selfishness of men, but a natural outcome of the demands that the duties of householding place on one. This is a very old excuse provided by those against liberation of women. But I feel it need not be pointed out that to consider it normal to enter into Purda, surrounded by walls for the rest of one's lifetime, severing all contacts with the rest of the world is in itself abnormal. Robindranath thus grew up in a household where the norms concerning women were changing rapidly and women were beginning to assert their individuality. When he returned from England, he was put in charge of the family estates in East Bengal. There, for the first time, he had an extended exposure to rural society and to the sufferings of rural people in general, and rural women in particular. As a, as a result, he began devising educational facilities and medical initiatives. This was the period when many of his short stories were written, and we find him portraying the plight of orphans and widows such as Ratan, the vulnerable orphan in The Postmaster, and Kushum, the lonely young widow who takes her own life in Gaterkata, The Tale of the Ghat. He also delineated the abuses of the dowry system and child wives as illustrated by the abuse of the child bride Nirupama in Dana Pauna, Profit and Loss, as well as the repression of female learning portrayed through the character of Uma in Kata, Notebook. Here, the child bride Uma, married to an older man, is punished by her husband for bringing her exercise book into her in-law's house and scribbling down her thoughts. Rabindranath continued his exploration of the female psyche in his dramas and fictional writings, which were both innovative for their literary form and social content. As his perception regarding female empowerment progressed, one finds that the portrayal of women changes from a position of victim, such as the young widows and orphans in his earlier stories, to one of a social dissenter, capable of defending herself and making new connections. There is also a shift from rural to urban portrayals. The publication of his novel, Gora, was significant for its delineation of young female characters and the manner in which they challenged the society around them. Such characters as Lolita, Sucharita, Anandamoy are shown in the process of shaping new identities and personal autonomy as they develop alternative, alternative ways 
of interaction with men in society and negotiate interreligious and interracial relationships. The conceptualization of such vital characters signaled the potential for a new identity that Rabindranath upheld for the female students at Shantaniketan. The female characters of Gora transcend the stereotypes of their sex, caste, and race to participate in a broader social vision, becoming role models for a new generation of Bengali women in social change. The years 1914 and 1915, which coincided with the outbreak of the First World War, marked the single most productive and radical period of Rabindranath's life in which he produced some of his most challenging short stories, novels, poems, and essays. It is here that Tagore establishes himself as an acute and critical observer of the customs, conduct, ideas, and beliefs of the society that surround him. Most of the pieces appeared in a new journal called Shabuj Potra, or New Leaf, which was jointly edited by Tagore and Pramata Chowdhury, husband of his niece, Indira Devi, the motto of the journal was Om Pranaya Svaha, an invocation to youth, new life, and the revitalization of society. As one critic put it, the journal, with Rabindranath as standard bearer of revolt, invoked the people to discard those useless customs and habits which impede the development of personality of men and especially of women. The tone of rebellion against the crushing burden of the joint family, feudal nobility and its henchmen, priests and spiritual guides is evident in each of his contributions. Gore Bayre, Home in the World, was one of Tagore's first pieces to be serialized in the new journal. With the themes of aggressive nationalism, sectarian thinking, and the concurrent unfolding of a woman's desires within a marital context were explored. Reviewers perceived it as a veritable bombshell on conservative society. This was followed by Chaturanga, or Broken Ties, a well-structured novella that exposes the various nuances of social and religious hypocrisy. It also delineates the dangers of psychic imbalance, whether intellectual, religious, sexual, or romantic. In Chaturanga, we are introduced to the transgressive Domini, one of Tagore's strongest and most full-blooded full -blooded characters. Widowed at a young age, she does not hesitate to challenge the patriarchal and religious norms that would oppress her as a widow. She charts her own course with single-minded autonomy and intelligence, traveling on her own and negotiating with the issues of self-discovery and self-realization that confront her. Ultimately, finding personal peace through a relationship of mutuality and social activism. The characters in Tagore's short stories of the Shibuj Patra period are equally radical particularly the story of Strir Patra, a wife's letter. Here, the transformation of its main female character, Renal, an upper caste woman, is portrayed from submissive wife to autonomous individual. Renal chooses to leave the Antipur, its restrictiveness, and, as she puts it, the shelter beneath her husband's feet not because of personal mistreatment, but rather because of the callous treatment of another female in the joint family that led to her suicide, as well as an oppressive atmosphere that inhibited personal development. In another story, Poila Number, House Number One, also published in Shibuj Bhatra, Tagore develops the character of Anila, a sensitive, well-educated woman married to a neglecting husband who charts a new path towards autonomy. Despite overtures from the caring and talented next-door neighbor, Shitangshu, Anila rejects both and leaves to pursue her own personal freedom. 
In his Shibuj Putra writings and later, the female characters become progressively more accomplished. And such female characters as Lobonna in Sheshir Kobita and Ila in Charadyai have university degrees. They also exhibit a mature self-awareness regarding their society and relations with men, as well as an increased secular outlook. Shabuj Patra also carried his essay, Strir Shika, The Education of Women, in, published in 1915. Here, he wrote in no uncertain terms that there should be equality in education. Whatever is worth knowing is knowledge, writes Tagore. It should be known equally by men and women, not for the sake of practical utility, but for the sake of knowing. The desire to know is the law of human nature. This was not to say, however, that there should be no distinction in education. Knowledge has two departments, he continued. One, pure knowledge. The other, utilitarian knowledge. In the field of pure knowledge, there is no distinction between men and women. Distinction exists in the sphere of practical utility. Women should acquire pure knowledge for becoming a mature being and utilitarian knowledge for becoming true women. It should be noted that Rabindranath was not only involved in creating new paradigms for Bengali women in his fiction, he was also facilitating a new freedom for them in his educational scheme in Shantaniketan. Here again, he drew upon the Joroshanko family model, where the women acted, wrote, and participated fully in the family life and beyond. When he initiated his experimental school at Chantaniketan in 1901, he had wanted to include girls from the beginning, but it did not prove practical until the end of 1908. What made the experiment so innovative was that the girls were not put in separate classes, but rather joined with the boys in classes, sports, and mondir services. With the foundation of Vishwabharati in 1921, women's education was formally adopted within the university. Academically, the Vishwabharati curriculum was the same for boys and girls, and it was carried out in a co-educational manner, with additional arrangements made for the teaching of domestic science. Along with the general social and cultural activities of the institution, the girls organized their own clubs, societies, and organizations. Co-educational co initiatives help village children develop practical skills, including preventative medicine, and help facilitate the reduction of caste prejudices through group presentation, participation. In order to facilitate the education of rural women, there were night classes and craft groups, as well as opportunities for distance education. The importance of female participation in dance, music, and drama in terms of developing a sense of creative autonomy has been documented in biographical reports by those who have studied at Shantaniketan. As early as 1909, Rabindranath began a, dr began a drama program involving women students. They were at first reluctant to participate, but he solved the problem with a play called Lakshmi's Test, which was directed by his daughter-in-law, Protima Devi, and involved only female characters. In a reverse situation, the boys sat behind Purda screens to watch the play, while the girls performed. In time, acting, singing, dancing, and co-educational staging of the plays became widely accepted. In 1922, when Tagore's drama Borsha Mungal was staged in Kolkata, it was the first time that Chantanikatan students, male and female, had appeared on the public stage. The Kalabhavan courses were especially popular, and women proved adept at expanding the areas of alpana, batik, and embroidery. 
In conclusion, it can be seen how Rabindranath assimilated and carried forth the Tagore family ideals that had centered on freedom and full development of human potential, including female potential. Rabindranath's role included exposing situations that were oppressive for all individuals, but he was especially sensitive to the sufferings of women as they faced traditional views and expectations, as well as their own self-imposed limitations. He argued for their autonomy through his letters, short stories, and essays, and was able to construct fresh and vital female role images to inspire a whole new generation. Later, by his act of admitting females into his Shantaniketan school, he became an innovative pioneer in co-education, thereby giving them greater access to the world at large. And for the last uh, section, I would like to just go through some of Tagore's paintings in the last 10 years of his life. Of course, he did uh, several thousand paintings. And these are some paintings that uh, show the diverse images of women. This last one I find especially fascinating. I've never seen it before. I, w I was going through his paintings at Robindra Bhavan. If you notice, Robindranath is at the top. With <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, Kathleen, and that subject itself needs a lot more discussion and exchange of ideas, maybe another time. Yes.